Hi, this time we're going to take a look at using Mendeley as a researching tool. Uh, in the last video I talked about Mendeley and using it to organize your research and stuff that you currently have. Um, there's also a lot of great use of the bookmarklet tool that you can use to save your pieces into Mendeley. I'm not going to go into that here. There's other videos that I'll put together at a later date. What I'm going to do is talk about using Mendeley to conduct research. Once again, I would suggest that if you are conducting research online uh, for, for academic or scholarly you know, pursuits, the first thing I do is use basic Google or a search engine and use Wikipedia as a way to get an overview or a better understanding of the complexity of the field, uh, the way that things are interrelated. After you've got a general idea of where things are situated and, and what the context is, then I would step into using Google Scholar as a way to search and figure out what other pieces of research are out there, who is citing what other papers, what different authors are in the field, and read some of that work. You also can use Mendeley, um, the, the search engine that they have set up in the social network part of it now. So if I'm in the dashboard, you can see all the people that I follow and follow me, my library once again. It'll show all the pieces that I currently have. But let's say I'm going into an area that I don't know a lot about right now. Um, so I have papers, I also have groups. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off in papers and I'm going to say, uh, let's, t let's say for example I'm doing uh, reading comprehension. This probably wouldn't be the best example, but if I go into reading comprehension, I'll see that they have, you know, about 130,000 papers that are already in here. So I could take a look in and say, all right, I'm really interested in, this is history of research and reading comprehension. I want to take a look at this piece. I can go in and see the, the author supplied keywords. I can get a brief overview. Um, many times I can go in and find this through Google Scholar or some of my other research tools. Um, what I can also do is, in, instead of doing reading comprehension and looking for papers, I can go in and I can look uh, for groups. So I can take a look and see different groups that are out on a specific topic. So I can look in here and see here is uh, somebody put together a group on straight up reading and there's one member 934 papers that are in this this group right now. So a lot of this stuff doesn't seem like it's that interesting to me uh, from a, a literacy point of view but if I go in I can see uh, I can hunt down a, a group of let's see reading thinking comprehension ah, and I know Brock so what I like to do is this group examines so it seems like this is something that you need to be invited into and I know Brock what I'll do is I'll ask him for the invite um, but basically there's two different ways if you're looking for a specific piece earlier I was looking for stem uh, I'm not really that interested at this point at least in stem cell uh, research but when I moved my way down, I saw that there are STEM teaching methods. Um, this group might be pretty interesting to me because I'm trying to get some STEM uh, research started here, uh, interdisciplinary stuff at the university. So what I could do is I could either read these papers to get a better understanding of what's in the field. I could ask to join the group and share my own papers um, if this was an extended piece. But then also if I just wanted to learn more about STEM, as I write or research or think, I can just go into papers and hunt down some of the stuff there. So these are different ways that you might be able to use Mendeley as a research tool.